thank you, Zoom. Um, so again, thanks for joining. So today's webinar is um, kind of an open forum for one, those that did submit questions ahead of time, but also an open forum for you all to ask those questions um, in regards to 2022 Cyberforce competition uh, changes. Um, first, before we get to kind of that open kind of Q&A portion, um, as we mentioned, 2022 is a hybrid format. And when I mean that, there is an in-person and a virtual option for um, all the participants and volunteers this year. So um, when you get into your application, you get the option to select whether you prefer to be in-person or you prefer your application to be selected for virtual. Um, obviously, for those that know me, near and dear to my heart, I hope you all choose in-person. Um, I just love the interaction of the in-person and we're able to host a good amount of teams in person. So um, for those of you that have participated in person before at each of the different labs, at most any lab was really able to host, which was at Argonne, which was the most, which is about 35 teams. Um, this year we're moving to a single location, which is the Q Center, which Jeannie is here to uh, show us a bit about the Q Center. Um, we're able to host about 90 teams. So put three Argons together um, for those that have been at Argonne um, and, and that's our space. So we're hoping to be able to max that out. Um, and honestly, I think that'll be a great opportunity for those that are there in person. And 90 teams is still giving everyone, um, you know, space. It's not, you know, we're not cramming everyone in like sardines. Um, you know, it's still giving people space and the ability to breathe and give people, um, you know, the time that still gives us space for a red team area and, and everything else. So, um, with that, I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes. I'm going to let Jeannie kind of give her, her tour and uh, talk about the Q Center so people have a bit understanding of, of what they're going to see, what they're going to look like. And I know there's been some questions about space when I've talked about where, where would you stay. Um, so Jeannie, I will hand the floor over to you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I am going to go right into um, the tour of our property. Um, I'm assuming you can all see that, Amanda, you can see it. Sure can. Okay, great. Okay, um, my name's Jeannie Han. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing at the Q Center, which is essentially a conference center hotel. Um, and what we have found for programs such as yours, the best way for us to showcase the property is to kind of walk you through um, what the property looks like and basically what your journey will look like from check-in to check-out. And so that's what I'm going to do for you today. I'm certainly happy to answer questions if I can, um, but essentially I just really want you to get comfortable with the facility and what it looks like. We're based in St. Charles, Illinois, right outside of Chicago and just west of O'Hare Airport. Um, this is a very general map of the property, but um, it really gives you a good idea of the space and what we have to offer. So from the point of arrival, you come in right here is our North Circle where the big globe is, the Q Center globe. And this W here is our Welcome Center. So as you enter, you will come right into the hotel here. And it will take you to the Welcome Center, which is also essentially the lobby. So this is where everybody checks in, gets their room keys. Um, it's a really great space. Um, not only do you check in, this is the North Circle outside these doors here. Um, there's more collaborators, collaborative space over here too. If anyone wants to sit, plug in, do some work. Down this hallway here, I won't take you there, but is our fitness center. We have a 4,000 square foot fitness center that is open 24 seven. So if you do need to work out, you can certainly do that. Also in the lobby, as long as the weather is okay, you will see bikes and helmets here. If it was snowing, we would have uh, cross country skis here, um, but you are welcome to take those off um, out onto our trails. Um, if you have any free time too. So that's just another amenity that's part of staying at the Q Center. So from the Welcome Center, after you check in right here, um, your program will be staying in the Q building and the C building. So you will be right here. Again, you'll check into the Welcome Center. You can either cut through the courtyard here, which I'll show you in a moment, or you can walk down B building to catch your rooms in the C or Q tower, okay? 
And so I'm going to show you a peek of what the guest rooms look like. You have two room types to choose from. Our standard room type, which is our twin bedrooms. It's a twin extended bed or our executive room types, which is essentially what a standard hotel room would look like. Our standard room types are smaller, but they are for individual stays. At one point we did have double double rooms here and then we modified them all to singles so people would not have to do share widths. So you have your own bed your window looking out. We're on 95 acres of land here on the campus. You have your vanity area, your coffee supplies, many fridge and water down there. And then out here to the right is your restroom with your shower. And then over here is your closet. And that is a standard room type. It's very well appointed. It's very comfortable. You have your light right above the bed. And again, the benefit that we have, and these are at a low price point too, is that you do not have to have a share with and you have your own living space. The other room type that we have is our executive room, which is essentially, again, a standard hotel room. All of these rooms have a queen size bed. We do not have any that have two beds. Um, again, you've got your desk area, much like the standard room, your television, an area where your Keurig is. And then over here is your restroom area. The only difference here is the vanity is on the inside instead of the outside of the room like it is in the standard room type. Okay, so again, just to kind of um, get you back to where we were, you check in here, you would go into one of your rooms here. And from there, we have a couple different spaces that if you would like to enjoy in any off time, the Fox is one of our entertainment rooms. Um, you can see it has a lot of games here and all of these are free when you go in there. And so some of the games that we have are pool, shuffleboard, on the back over here, there's darts, backgammon. We have chess down here. And then on the other end, again, we have foosball, pool table, shuffleboard, and this arcade game that has 400 um, different kind of retro arcade games. This is open until usually 11 to 12 midnight. Um, and again, all of these games are free that you can play. The other thing I wanna highlight here that I talked about was the courtyard. This is an area that you can cut through, but it's open all the time. Um, there's several ways to get to it. I'm going to show you the way through the bistro. The bistro is one of our cafes that um, you can get pizzas and things like that at. Um, usually we have sport games on one of these TVs, but when you exit out of the bistro, it goes into the courtyard. So I wanna show you some of that because it will be open during your time here and it's a good time. Um, it's summer now, but you'd be here in the fall. So we have fire pits going. There's music that's always playing out here. There's different benches. You can't see them here now, but we have Adirondack chairs. There's also bago games in both corners. So if you have time, there's lights out here. You can go out and play at night. You could sit by the fire pits. You can get some s'mores from the bistro and just kind of hang out. Okay, so food. Um, the nice thing about staying here, um, and this is why I really encourage our groups to stay when they're coming in, is that part of staying at Q Center is it is an all-inclusive with the exception of the Fox and the Bistro, um, much like if any of you have ever stayed at a resort, or maybe an all-inclusive resort in Mexico, or if you've ever gone on a cruise, everything, if you are staying, when you're staying here is complimentary that you see. So the first thing I'm going to show you is part of our dining space. So down below the Q tower is our Q dining room. And that's where your breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served. Once again, in the morning, I don't have a full shot of that because when we did this virtual tour, um, we did not have the dining space all the way open. But this is part of where you would sit. The dining area sits 600. And then below, we have another 200 seats. And this space um, has your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so in the morning, you'll have 
potentially some live action stations with omelets, eggs, um, different breakfast meats, cereals, oatmeals, all different baked goods, your coffee, all the different sodas you would want. Um, and that's for you to take. And it's, it's pretty much anything you could possibly want is going to be there for breakfast. For lunch, um, we, you could be using this or we may be doing box lunches. I don't know yet, but same thing and also dinner. So dinner will have um, some kind of ethnic cuisine. We'll have maybe a chicken or a steak with fresh vegetables and um, rice. And then there also could be pizza and burgers and fries and then a salad bar and soup. So it's all you can eat. You can eat as much as you want. And again, there's sodas and coffee and decaf and water. Uh, we also have desserts there plus soft serve ice cream um, with all the toppings. So it's really great. Everything is marked, no matter what your dietary need is. If you're vegan, allergic to nuts, dairy-free, um, everything is marked great. And there's basically something for everybody here. So once again, when you check in, you come here, you'd go to your rooms here right below Q Tower. So if you're staying here, your dining room is right here where you would eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There's coffee service there too. So if you wake up and just want to go grab some coffee, if you don't want to make it in your room, you could certainly do that as well. From there, that's when you're going to walk to your meeting space. Your meeting space is in the Fox River Ballroom. And also, I know we have some breakout space here. So I'm going to show you what that looks like now. Okay, so your group essentially will be using the majority of the Fox River Ballroom. Um, I'm showing you four sections right now. I'm going to show you the other half in a moment. Um, but this is what the meeting space looks like. I believe in your case, um, you'll be sitting in half rounds, um, but you can kind of get in a good idea of how large this room is. When the whole thing is opened up, it's 20,000 square feet. All of our audiovisual functions are built up into the ceilings. And then of course our screens up ahead. I'm going to walk out here and show you the other sections of the ballroom. Um, this hallway that we're facing here, right around the corner is Q Dining, where your breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served, and the rooms are right above that. So essentially, you're just coming right down into the ballroom to get to your meeting space. So it's very convenient. It's easy to get run back to your room if you need to. Um, if you need to go get coffee or soda, you can certainly do that too back in the dining room. These are the other two sections of the ballroom. Um, this is set for a social event, but you can kind of get a good idea. This particular section looks out to this pre-function area that I'm going to show you. So during your meeting event, um, you, if you need to step out, our restrooms are right around the corner here. Down this area, our restrooms, okay? If you need to get some air, you can go out here or out to our balcony patio. But what you see here is where your all day breaks are. So the nice thing about Q Center, again, like I said, it's all inclusive. So here in the morning after you're, you've already had your breakfast, you'll still have more food out here. So you'll see baked goods, homemade energy bars, um, trail mix, fresh fruit. In the afternoon, you may see M&Ms, goldfish, pita, hummus, chips, salsa, fresh sliced um, veggies with maybe some dip. And over here, you have all day sodas throughout the day, water stations and coffee and tea and decaf that'll be set up throughout the day. So you'll never go without something to drink or eat while you're here. Like I said, it's very convenient. Down here is our e-building which I believe there could be some office space for more of your facilitators or your administrators. And the nice thing about Q Center is you won't see this much in the ballroom, but down all of these different hallways, we have writable walls. Um, people are, you know, as you walk down there, you may see different things like, where are you from? What's your favorite book? How far did you travel? And so we have all these collaboration spaces down the hallways. At the end of this hallway here is where we just came from, the ballroom. Every single hallway at the end of e-building has a collaboration center like this. So if you need a break, you need to get some um, kind of alone time or you just want to relax, you can come sit here. Um, out these windows is our Fox River. And again, all writable walls. So if you need to jot something down, if you're just, you know, just trying to get to know somebody or playing a game, you can do that here. Okay, so I showed you where you checked in. I showed you the path to get to your sleeping rooms, 
Down below here is where all your food is throughout the day. And then the Fox River Ballroom is where your meeting is and all your breaks for your food throughout the day. One other space I'm gonna show you because you're going to come across this as you're walking, the business center. So the business center is essentially the midpoint of the entire property. This is also an area where people will kind of meet up because it is the center of the entire hotel. Down this hallway here goes to the Fox River Ballroom where your general session is and that's where you'll be the entire day. Again, this is another break area. So if you happen to be walking this way and you wanna grab food off of here, you certainly can. You can grab a soda from here, any kind of drinks, uh, uh, your coffee, tea, or decaf. If you want a candy bar, M&Ms, whatever we happen to be serving that day. Back towards this hallway is where the dining room is and all of your sleeping rooms. And right out this window here is the courtyard that I showed you earlier where the fire pits are. But this is just another example of some really nice areas that you can hang out in. Um, again, we, we want people to stay over too because we have a lot of spaces like this where you can hang out at night, you can chit chat, network with people, whatever you like. A couple other things I just wanna mention, if you have free time, like I said, we have the bikes. Down this way is where the Fox River is. There's a, a trail there. There's also trails throughout the property. You can run there in the morning, you can walk, you can take the bikes, you can ride down there. These go 40 miles in either direction. Um, and it's a really great sightseeing for bald eagles, deer. Um, you'll see wildlife out there. All the, every time I go on there, I, see, I usually see a deer every single time. So it's really beautiful if you have a chance in the morning to get out. Um, you're going to be there during a really great time of the year. The leaves will be changing. It'll be really beautiful. Um, so again, the, the business center that I showed you that I said was the central point is right here. So really when you're coming from your, your dining area or your rooms, you're coming through here to get to your Fox River Ballroom. Um, and lastly, the only thing I wanted to talk about was reservations because I know that's important too. Um, once we're ready to go and to open up the reservation blocks, you will get a link from Amanda um, and that's how you make reservations. And so you'll be able to go in and pick, do I want that standard room, which is your private room with your twin bed? Again, this is at a very low price point or your executive room. And so you'll be able to go through, it's called Paskey. It'll walk you through the reservation process where you can go click, get your confirmation. It's very simple. Um, and that also will put you in there where you'll get some no before you goes. They'll tell you anything, activities that are going on that week. If you want to do a lead run in the morning or yoga or something kind of an activity, they'll let you know. They'll let you know what the weather is like before you get there um, and any other activities that happen to be going on um, during your stay. Um, so that really concludes um, some just general information about the property and hopefully it paints a good picture of what your stay would be like. And again, um, we're very excited to welcome you. I think you'll love this environment. It's truly a, a training campus hotel um, that's really built for people to come together and collaborate. And again, I think the food and beverage options are probably the biggest point um, and really having access to that the whole time you're there is, is really a wonderful benefit um, for staying at the property. So that is all I have. Um, Amanda, I'm happy to take questions if anybody has anything um, or if you want to collect them for me, it's totally up to you. I'll answer what I can. If I can't, I'll, I can take it back and find out and then get back to you. I think the only question that we have right now, and I'm not certain if, if we've come to a full consensus yet with, between you and I, but um, was what was the price per room for um, I think by the standard and the executive that we sure, have Sure, sure. I think the last price you and I talked about for the standard was $89. And then okay. the executive is $125. Perfect. So Trey, it's $89 for the standard, which is the, the twin extra mm -hmm. long bed. Yep. And then uh, you said what, $120? $125 for the executive. For the executive. Is there any other questions or any questions about the destination that I can help answer? I will add, and I guess I, guess I can come back on video so she yeah. doesn't feel so alone here. She doesn't <laughs> feel so alone. Um, I will, I will make note knowing that I live near here, um, you know, 
it's not that um, Q Center is in the middle of nowhere. It's not, but no. it is not. Um, it's also for those of you that might go, um, well, let's see what other hotels are nearby. It is also um, the hotels that maybe are in the, the near vicinity to this are um, not necessarily like I would say um, top choice uh, hotels um, either. They're, they're typically, um, I would say like your one star, maybe two star hotels. They're meant to be like, um, you know, your quick overnight, your Motel 6, your those kind of hotels. So again, if, if that's a choice and that's something you really want to do, that's fine. Um, but it obviously also is a, a slight inconvenience as, as you saw on the map there of Jeannie showing, you know, you would have to still drive out and then come back, drive back in, check in in the morning at that gate. And then, you know, for your whole team, make your way through and come back into the the center versus staying on site, you're already there. So if your team feels the need to wake up in the morning, you know, five minutes before game time starts, you know, you just gotta run your, your behind all the way over to the, the Fox ballroom. So just some things to think about. Obviously everyone is open to whatever you'd like to do, but um, is there any other, I mean, again, if you have questions later, obviously feel free to email the Cyberforce email and I can always circle them back to Jeannie, but in the meantime, is there any other questions for Jeannie? Can I just like piggyback a little bit on what you said? Please. Um, obviously I have to, cause I work here, but we have uh, quite a few groups that are, are similar in just the layout of the event. Um, and because it is a very short stay, I encourage you to stay only because it, you, um, you, sometimes I feel like when we have groups that may decide not to, then they change their mind and want to check in the next day um, because you really miss, you will feel like you're kind of missing out of the vibe of Q Center from having to leave at night. Um, it's nice to be able to stay and go to a lot of our different little private lobby areas and meet with your teens or groups or, you know, have a coffee or a soda or some coffee at night by the fire pit. So I just encourage that because I know when I travel to a place I've never been to, you kind of sometimes get there and you get your groundings and you're like, oh, shoot, I wish I had done this. So I just wanted to echo that, Amanda. So thank you so much. Of course. Any Anyone with any other questions? Otherwise, we can. Going once, going twice. All right, well, again, if anyone has questions, again, feel free to to either you can throw them in the chat and if, if Jeannie's not available or um, you know has to step away, I will circle back with her um, and or feel free to email them to the Cyberforce email and um, you know we'll get those answered for everyone. Um, again, once we finish that, we that email um, with the link for registration will come from, from me to the teams um, for people to register. And um, you know, we'll we'll get that out soon so that people can start at least looking at at those registration blocks. Thanks, Jeannie, I appreciate okay. it. Yeah, I'm gonna hang on just for a few more minutes here and then I'll drop off. Sounds good. All right, thank you. Um, all righty, so um, I'm gonna start going through some of the questions that I did get. So I'm gonna like semi move this over so you guys don't see half of my face. Um, so uh, Tom asked, which airport is closer? Um, technically, O'Hare and Midway are kind of 50-50 for us, so it just really depends on your preference. Um, Southwest uh, now goes into O'Hare. Um, it, it depends on how your uh, flavor of um, how you feel about going through the international terminal, I guess. Um, so Southwest, you have to fly through the international terminal at O'Hare versus Midway is basically mostly only Southwest minus a few Delta um, flights that go in and out. Um, so both of them are um, fairly convenient either way. So it's just dependent on your flavor of uh, airline and whichever obviously works convenient for, for both. But um, that's kind of in part also why we chose to have a central location here in around Chicago is that there's two major airports for everyone. Um, all right, I'm gonna go through some of the questions that came in, but again, feel free to continue to um, put questions in the chat and I'll try to answer as I can. And again, I'm sorry that the terrible sun has decided now to hit me in the face. <coughs> um, so a few questions that came in, um, 
in the registration that so I can just um, try to help answer. Um, some are some are cyber force and some aren't, but I don't want to forget any. Um, so there's a question that came in that said, what type of IDS or IPS tools can we use, such as PFSense, Snort, Seek, et cetera? Um, so I, I can't be 100% um, specific on what you can or can't use quite yet, as we're still working through the exact um, rules of what is or is not allowed this year. Um, but I will say typically in um, uh, CyberForce is, the rules are that it needs to be free and open source. And I know that comes with um, typically a slightly gray box around some things because in prior years in our Azure environments, um, you know, things are, have been free, but when you try to download or utilize it, there comes a cost. And so it's been kind of a, an iffy situation. Um, but this year we are moving to AWS. Um, so, we will be um, slightly altering some of our things. That does not mean that we're altering to allow um, cost services, but um, everything that is utilized by teams needs to be free or open source. And when I say free or open source, or it has to be openly available to everyone, it means that if you're going to utilize software that um, is available to all .edu's, then you need to have proof that it's available to all .edu's. Um, not something that's only available to, you know, University of Chicago, um, that it's only available to the Amanda universities of the world. Um, it has to be available to everyone that provides somewhat of a level playing field um, to ensure that everyone's starting on a fair ground. Otherwise, free and open source, anyone has the ability to be able to go out and download it and or pay the free dollars for it. Um, so that's kind of where we start with that. Um, the second portion to that question from someone was, will machines be reset prior to the competition start? Um, we never do that. So if that is something that's happened before, I'm guessing in another competition, we don't do that. Um, so Cyberforce is, like I said, a different flavor. Um, we give you the time ahead of time purposefully so that you can go in there and actually look at uh, your machines. Um, harden them and defend them ahead of time. And when I say defend, it doesn't mean that we're actively attacking them, but um, put up your IDS, your IPS, uh, put in your firewall if you feel that's necessary, um, build in your services that we haven't provided, um, do what you need to do as long as it's within the rules, um, but we don't reset your machines come the game day. Um, that would be a waste of your time, quite frankly. And I feel bad and as Anne's on the, the call here, so I'll call her out. PNNL um, graciously helps us with the scoring. And that would be, I feel like, such a waste of their time to have reviewed all your documents for them to, for us to turn around and reset your boxes. Um, so the only time anything's reset is by request from a team um, because either you have completely blown up your own box and you're asking us as labs to reset it for you because you um, have come to a point in which you can't do it yourself. Um, for that, you lose points for, or, um, you know, it's being reset for some reason because you've gone outside of the rules and we've informed you as such that we're resetting the box because you've completely ignored the fact that you've broken a rule that's very blatantly been pointed out to you. So um, let me answer those. Any questions to anything that I said there that I can clarify for someone? I'll leave that for you for a few. Um, another one that came in ahead of time was, I'm looking for resources to prepare myself and a team to assist with recruitment and practice. Um, I'm going to presume that means for, I'm hoping for Cyberforce. Um, I always like to steer people to, um, on the website, which I always have to remind myself of the new URL, cyberforce.energy.gov. On the top under Cyberforce, um, I probably can just pull it up and share my screen here too, can't you, Amanda? Um, I can, let's do that. We shall share. Um, 
So let me move all these things out of the way here for everyone because no one needs to see my face more than they do. Um, so when you get to the main cyber force page, hopefully everyone can see the page. Um, here's your main cyber force program page. Under cyber force competition, there's the whole thing of cyber prior cyber force competitions, all graciously color coded to whatever the color was. I highly recommend people go through these as um, many people are aware the cyber force competition is meant to be um, a repeatable kind of competition with obviously we make alterations every year, but um, you can get an understanding of what is being scored, how it's being scored. We have rubrics in here. Um, we have the blanket scenarios of the entire competition of particular um, smaller portions in the competition or I should say um, like our C-suite panels, we have the scenarios in there, um, how the red team has is scoring, how you're expected to get services up and running. So everything is available for you in here. So you click one, it literally goes through who's winners, who's what the scenarios are. If you wanted to know who's competed for guidelines or our rules, you know, and, and pictures and whatnot, everything's in there. Um, you know, we don't try to hide anything because Ultimately, our goal here is to make you all do better so and, and have everything that you need. So it's all there for you. So that's ultimately my suggestion for you is where to start um, would be right there is to start in the, the prior competitions. So I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, so let's talk about the previous compilation of competition anomaly questions and how can the previous attempt aids in winning this year's Cyberforce competition. Um, I mean, sure, we can talk about them. Um, I love how some people are so direct. I love it. Um, I guess there are anomalies uh, again this year, just like every year. Um, I, I don't know that I would say like, if you've done anomalies before that like that would help you win the competition this year. Um, I do think that helps you understand of the the diversity in the anomalies um, that we have every year. Um, so for those of you that are brand new to the cyber force competition, I'll bat, take a step back and explain what is an anomaly first. So for those of you that um, have been a part of CCDC, I apologize, I don't know the colors. And so if someone's part of that, you can maybe give me the color. I think it's purple. So maybe someone could like, or at least tell me yes um, in the chat, maybe. Um, anomalies for us are the additive tasks um, that we have students do through, I shouldn't just say students, but the participants do throughout the day. Um, and so for us, that could be anything from uh, looking at a forensics file and answering something um, in regards to that forensics file, all the way to making a paper airplane to, um, you know, you ha someone has to step out of the room for a meeting to, um, you know, reviewing log files. Um, Thanks, Ann. Orange team. Um, see, it's too many colors around here. We all should talk about colors one day. But um, so I, for us, we map ours to the NIST NICE framework. And so um, throughout the day, those are available for people to do. Additionally, anomalies for us is our attempt to somewhat simulate a real world environment as well. Um, for, for students, you have to realize like um, Cyberforce is obviously a crash course in um, what one day in the life of a terrible day um, typically for a cyber analyst would be. Um, but most of us aren't sitting around at a table of six like chit chatting and all staring at our screens all day, ensuring that nothing goes wrong, already anticipating something going wrong. Um, most of us have other work we're doing um, we're, you know, having this webinar, going to a meeting, has another project going on, you know, doing something else. We had coffee with a friend. We had to go to the bathroom. We're going to have lunch and, and whatnot. Um, and so these anomalies for us are kind of those additive tasks where we have to kind of weigh the, 
the pros and cons of spending the time doing it, the risk to do it um, versus staring at my screen and, and watching whatever my job is for the team that day for CyberForce. Um, so that's for that. Um, so maybe um, having done some anomalies before will help. Obviously anomalies do have a, a good portion of points associated with them because there are a lot of them. Um, but I don't know that having done them before um, would make or break whether you win. So that's my answer for that. Um, let's see here. Uh, in the first webinar, I mentioned pink team. I think we're still um, trying to figure this all out. Um, I think we're still just trying to, in a hybrid world, figure out where we're at um, situated with, with numbers before we, we jump forward with pink. But I have who wrote that, so I will reach back out to you in the event we get to pink, I promise you. Um, will defenders learn about detecting, logging, hunting, C2 or other artifacts left behind by the attackers on machines? Um, so I can't 100% speak to Red Team um, and what their plan of attack is this year, but um, as we're working through kind of um, the, the plan for them, but I do believe that um, there will be some more of um, a, a portion of red team that will be in um, an educational piece to how, um, how vulnerabilities are already on the machines and um, how to actually either find, locate, clean, eradicate um, uh, the vulnerabilities that are within. Um, and also to um, measure the realistic elements to potential um, defenses that are being built. Um, understand that CyberForce is not meant to be on an IT network. So when we think about, hey, what can I use a PFSense, Snort, Zeek, all that stuff, you're, you're building defenses for an operational technology network. So, you know, we have to obviously build in mind knowing that we can't always build on a a Windows 2000 server because AWS and my, even Microsoft doesn't allow that anymore for us to have those um, operating systems even in the cloud. Um, but we still need to equally take into account the realism that you provide us because we're telling you we're building for an OT network. Um, so that in part is also what Red Team will be looking at. Todd, your question, well, when will volunteers be notified if they are selected? So. Um, that was another question here. Please explain different criteria for volunteer placement opportunities. So um, I like to state volunteers are volunteers. Um, you're volunteering your time. So I appreciate you volunteering your time. Um, I know Red Team has a slightly additive um, volunteering checklist. So for Red Team, usually, um, I mean, again, you're volunteering your time. Um, there's an additive uh, kind of lift with Red. Um, they do ask once um the email goes out that they that you kind of run through um i guess a, a mini boot camp on the red side um to just ensure that you're you're prepared to be on your own um for portions of cyber force in the event that that does need to happen um, because it is hybrid and and portions are, of the team will be virtual and portions of the team potentially will be on site um, they just kind of want to figure out where people's skills are so um, I would say, you know, usually we do it on a rolling basis of just kind of letting people know that here's the volunteers. So um, we've just been waiting for Red Team, and that's me and Red Team, to identify what their, their plan moving forward is before we bring all the volunteers in. So I would say here within the next couple of weeks, issue learning is at DEF CON is this week. So um, Red Team is a little busy. Um, Next question that I have is, um, I guess I could probably answer that question as well for those that were on green team. Um, again, similar to, to Todd's question of if you were on green team, um, you know, again, we typically will send out an email kind of in a rolling basis because it's so early. Um, you know, I usually have the green team lead just kind of email out letting you know that we've received your 
um, registration for it. Um, I know usually because it is so early, people tend to forget, doesn't go on a calendar and, and we get closer and things have changed. Everyone has lives. So understand we appreciate everyone who does volunteer in the first place. Um, so, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's totally um, up to everyone. Um, can you attempt to volunteer for more than one team just to increase the odds of selection? Joe, can you explain? I mean, um, so I guess I could probably, we can unmute if you want. Joe, do you want to um, explain what you mean? Like, do you mean like attempt to volunteer for green and red? Right, in case red team says, well, you don't have as much as we're looking for in a red team member, but maybe green team could use that level of skill or something like that. So I think, so I don't think red team will ever say no, they might just have put you in a different um, particular position than like leading something. So ultimately their boot camp is really to ensure that you're gonna actually show up on the day of. We've had plenty of volunteers that have uh, on day of unfortunately not come, um, which is why, like I said, I appreciate my volunteers when they do come very much. Um, so you, I don't think there's any need to try to increase your odds of selection. In the event that you do take the boot camp and you're like, this is way too much for me, um, you know, you can always ping me and tell me I'd like to just be on the green team. We're very amenable to whatever needs are are needed. Um, and then I think the, the last few are kind of a, a little bit um, out of scope for the thing, but how can you start your cyber career? Um, you know, again, Cyberforce, the program itself, not just the competition is meant to be a workforce development effort. So anyone that participates in any of the Cyberforce programs, so that includes um, RAIN that just occurred, that includes Cyberforce competition, that includes the volunteers that are part of Cyberforce competition. So if you register, Ahead of time here, you all are invited to um, participate in the virtual career fair that will occur in October this year. So it's pre-competition. Um, and so if you're interested in um, you know, getting an internship, a job, or you're just wanting to see what else is out there in the industry, um, whether that's at one of the national labs, at the Department of Energy, at the energy sector, at one of the many other industry partners that we have, um, you know, you are more than welcome to come and and uh, talk to people. Doesn't mean you have to get a job or anything, but um, that is opportunities out there, as well as when there are um, jobs open and available. Um, there are two on the website right now from Berkshire Hathaway that, um, you know, they're more than willing to actually interview people as soon as someone says that they've done Cyberforce. Um, just because you've been part of Cyberforce, they are well aware of the program. So, um, you know, it's just merely uh, falling into it sometimes. Um, are schools going to be submitting a blue team registration? Is there any kind of conflict of interest other students from the same school want to volunteer? No, there is not. Um, so typically at the end, I will deconflict and I'll just be pinging everyone to ensure that um, there, uh, everyone kind of understands their roles and ensuring that people know that they can't be sharing information across to green, red, or blue. And to add that for anyone who's on the call and or anyone who's watching uh, for the second time, I guess, when they watch a recording, um, teams or schools are more than welcome to submit more than one blue team. Um, I will reiterate that teams, schools are allowed to submit more than one blue team. Um, I know in years past, uh, you know, we typically have only selected one team per school, but because we're doing hybrid, um, you know, and the goal being to uh, being a workforce development effort, we would like to try to get as many teams as possible um, and obviously help all of you to be able to get to where you'd like to go and to ensure that we fill as many cybersecurity jobs in the energy sector as possible. Um, and so we can't do that if we have to cap. Um, obviously, I'd love to see you all in person. I think Anne's coming to in person. She's going to fly across the United States and, and come here from um, PNNL. So, yeah, it's going to be a crazy two weeks for me. <laughs> um, so, you know, join the fun. 
Um, you know, but I understand equally that, you know, it's not everyone's cup of tea. So virtual is obviously always an option as well. Um, so um, I just want to caveat that because I know there are some people that, you know, are remember the days in which it's only one team for school. So if you have more than one team that is interested or you think you can potentially get another team, feel free to. Um, and then Todd, yes, Argon does have remote internships as well, um, just like PNLs. I think most labs have uh, remote options at this point um, for most things. Um, so yes, I um, I think I answered all. Is there other questions that anyone has? Will the career fair be virtual? Yes, I probably should have. Um, I should say that the career fair is virtual. So the career fair will be October 12th from, I should double check the time, but I think it's from one to four Eastern. I'm gonna have to double check that time. Um, but, uh, so, but I know it's October 12th. Um, so that will be coming out here shortly with the um, invite for that. Um, but, uh, it's all virtual. It's done on a, a Brazen, their platform, and you just have to upload a resume and then make yourself a, a little profile. It seemed to work fairly well last year. At least I thought so. So to re-emphasize here, let's re-emphasize just because I know we only have 12 minutes left and I will give people last few minutes to rethink if there's any questions that you have. Um, Cyberforce is hybrid, in-person or virtual. The in-person is at Q Center in St. Charles. Again, that's about 30 to 40 minutes from the airports. I know that's not like just a hop, skip and a jump, but it's not terribly far. Um, that's really the same distance to get to Argonne, quite frankly. Um, it's, as, as Jeannie mentioned, you know, obviously there's some benefits to staying at the Q Center over trying to find the hotels nearby. Um, but again, everyone is open to whatever they would like to do. Obviously, I know some universities and schools have, you know, their, you know, Hyatt preference or, or Hilton preferences at, even on their own schools. So, you know, we understand, uh, you know, what, what you need to do is what you need to do. Um, in person, obviously, there's some additive, you know, things that are going on. Just because it's in person, we have that ability to bring things to life, um, which is why I would love for people to be there. Um, you know, about 90-ish teams we can host in person. Um, and then, uh, you know, you get that ability to interact. Um, there still will be the, you know, for lack of a better term, a webcast um, going on all day, the full eight hour stream for those that have understood or been a part of that before. Um, and then there's also, like I said, the virtual option. So for those that either you know, just your lifestyle or your team just doesn't have the means to, to come in person, we are fortunate enough to still keep virtual going. So please, 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 um, you know, register for whatever makes most sense. And if if at some point when you register and you said, we registered for virtual and we figured out a way that we can come in person, you can always email me at the cyberforce competition at anl.gov and I can switch your registration over. That's not a problem at all or vice versa. If we registered for in-person, we're gonna have to go virtual. We can do that too. We're very amenable to whatever the needs are of the students. Um, teams again, our school can apply with more than one team if that's two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, I can't promise that every team is going to be accepted, but if you have more than one team, you're more than welcome to apply with more team than one team. Um, if at some point we can't accept every team, of course, we will go to the school and ask which teams they would like to have sent um, and hope that everyone can work together at the school to figure out the teams that they would like to have sent. Um, volunteers, as I mentioned, um, I will certainly uh, start working to have those emails rolled out to ensure that everyone's aware that we have gotten your registrations for them and work with both the red and green leads to start working up whatever's necessary for you all for the days of knowing that we're still three months out. Um, so I just wanna make sure that people have it on their calendars. 
Um, and then finally, again, if there's any questions, I guess, you know, we have the virtual career fair October 12th. I think it's one to four Eastern. I will double check that time though. Um, but uh, that is available for anyone that has registered or applies for Cyberforce, has been a part of Conquer the Hill or anything from the last Cyberforce competition, we will still resend. And then finally, um, if there's anything that comes up for this uh, upcoming Cyberforce competition that has not been answered yet, or you think of post this um, meeting, feel free to email cyberforcecompetition at anl.gov. And I am happy to respond to you and let you know what I can if I know the answer or I will get you an answer. Um, but with that, is there any other questions for this upcoming? competition that I can answer now. Going once, going twice. All right. Happy Wednesday, everyone. I hope you all have a great day, uh, rest of your day, I guess, for most of you. Um, and thank you all for taking the time out of your days to come and join me. Um, and I will chat with you all soon. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda.